dear brother and sister, the saints in Christ, welcome to a new episode. This is our second and last episode. What is like uh, distinguish, uh, distinguish Jesus from others? Although I, you cannot actually compare Jesus to others, but uh, because some people are still arguing about that, okay, just to compare and see. Uh, just a quick reminder, I'll put still the link of the book, uh, Jesus in all the books. It's in Arabic. If you'd like to download it, if you can read Arabic, that would be good. So you can download it. It doesn't cost you anything. Also, before I go into the uh, episode, I would like just a quick reminder. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do and give it a like. And if you can share it on your social media, that would be great too. Also, I would like to emphasize before I start that when Yahweh, the true God, created man, he told Adam, you can eat from every tree except one tree, one tree. And this one tree, if you eat from it on that day, if you eat, you should, surely you should die, should die. All right. And at the same time, the Lord did not put like electric uh, fence around this forbidden tree. Or a German shepherd dog, like so Adam cannot come towards it. Why? Because the Lord wants us to come with our free will, not non, not 99.999%, but 100%. That's why he just left it like that. Uh, he gave you the, the warning, and it's not entirely up to you whether you go and eat or you don't go. And also a quick reminder again, why the Lord Jesus Christ was, used to speak to people in parables. Why? Because if you're really interested, you go and search. Or you go and ask him. But if someone just came, just, ah, oh, yeah, they heard about all these teachings. And after that, the Lord just gave them, like, filled their stomachs. And then, ah, oh, that was good. And they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. Again, the Lord wants us, like, to come 100% with our own will in order to seek him, to ask him. All right? Otherwise, he, he wants us, like, to be 100% fully 100% to choose him as God and Savior and, uh, and Redeemer and Helper and everything and the Intercessor, right? Otherwise, not interested, all right? So there is no yeah, like uh, pressure in you that you have to unless you realize that you need it, okay? We spoke in the first episode that there is only one God. His name is Yahweh. Mentioned 32 times in the Old Testament as the Holy One of Israel. And we mentioned also there is only one book written by the Holy Spirit. Not two books, only one book written by many authors or prophet, uh, prof, uh, prophets. Uh, and this one book uh, is talking about only one person. This person is named the, the Messiah and he has two comings. First coming to redeem those who believe in him, those who receive him as a savior, as the redeemer, as God or the son of God, whichever it is the same, uh, and they freely accept him and they trust that they cannot go to heaven through their own deeds by, by faith in him. This, this is for the first coming. Second coming, those who actually accepted him as that, he, he is coming not to, to judge them because there is no judgment for those who accept Jesus as Savior and God. But to reward them for, this go, for their good deeds that have been done by the Holy Spirit or as fruit of the Holy Spirit and will judge those who did not accept him or receive him after all this li the, 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 like the, their life on earth and all this uh, scriptures that been given to us and they still did not receive him as God and Savior then he would be judging them all right uh, we also spoke that actually uh, there is many prophecies over at least 2,000 years before his coming was talking about him and of taking seven examples from the Gospels last episode that the authors of the Gospels written by the Holy Spirit, they were just referring or uh, unpacking 
He said, this happened like this to fulfill the prophecy of the Old Testament. All right? That mentioned in the Old Testament. Which means now those new and the Old Testament actually one book. Because the New Testament is like the fulfillment of the prophecies that are mentioned in the Old Testament. All right? Plus also there are some prophecies in the New Testament regarding uh, the second uh, coming. Like uh, the rapture and the uh, great tribulation. Then the... Um, uh, uh, the millennium uh, and the life forever. Uh, uh, so again, our object is one God, one book. About talking, uh, talking about one person has two comings: first coming to uh, redeem, second come to judge and reward. Today's episode, and which is the last one, will have two points. Number one: how the Messiah himself who is the subject of the prophecies of the Old Testament, he himself was referring or getting witness about his own self and his own work from, by referring to the, oh, like some of the prophecies in the Old Testament while he was uh, on earth. The second one, the second point we'll touch on, how actually he himself mentioned some prophecies about his, in very much detail, how he will be handled uh, handled for judgment to the to the uh, like high priest and to the Gentiles who were like uh, mock him and he will be crucified he will die and in three days he will rise again. Uh, uh, this is just to remind you again. This is like to show how the Messiah is totally different than all those who became before him. And all those who will be coming until even the second coming, whether they are called the prophets or messengers, or even they call them God or gods. Okay. So, uh, uh, at the end of the episode, I leave you one question. Okay. So now let's start with the first point. Jesus or the Messiah uh, witnessing for himself and his uh, mission uh, in detail. Then Jesus said to them, to the disciples, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will scatter. He told them this uh, just before like the night he's, like, uh, uh, he's going to be arrested. Uh, uh, when Peter said, uh, "If everyone denies you, I will not that is done. Don't don't panic about this. This is what's going to happen." So, where about this actually was mentioned? It's mentioned in the book of Zechariah, chapter seven. Who how, who is Zechariah? Five hundred twenty before Christ said that. Awake, O sword! Again is my shepherd. Again is the man who is my companion. Says the Lord of hosts. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered then i will turn my hand against the, the little ones so here we go so 520 before christ there is a prophecy about that and when they were speaking it was in his mind said, no 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 yeah i, I know what's going to happen everyone you will like uh, like uh, you will flee why because you will see me being like arrested or being like uh, in, in the position that the end of my mission now uh, teaching is finished I have now to save the people okay number two uh, at the time of Jesus being arrested you know Peter just got uh, a sword or a knife whatever you would like to call and he cut the uh, the ear of the uh, one of the servants of the high priest and suddenly one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword, struck the servant of the high priest, and cut off his, his ear. But Jesus said to him, Put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by sword. Or, now listen to this, Or, do you think that I cannot now pray to my father, and he will provide me with more than twelve legions of angels how then could the scripture 
scriptures be fulfilled that it must be happen thus then i told him why are you doing this it is now being going around teaching and healing and people and they're carrying like doing all this stuff now it's over those three years now is like of preaching is gone now i must offer myself as a sacrifice so don't try like to now it is the time to be arrested to be taken to be judged or to be in sadness sentenced and to die and, uh, and rise again all right so i told him why what are you doing where, where how then could the scriptures be fulfilled ah right so that's it must be happen in that hour jesus said to the multitude have you come to have you come out as uh, as against a, a robber with swords and clubs to take me i sat daily with you teaching in the temple and you did not seize me but all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled this is the main focus of the lord the scripture the word of god we have to this what should be our own focus dear brother and sister not the tradition and the, and all these fairy tales about anointing oils coming from whatever and high appearances this is you base your faith on this this is a, i would say it's a fake faith anyway so let's continue but all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled then all the disciples forsook him and fled and this is what you told them but that was also a fulfillment of a prophecy by zachariah all right uh, number three listen to this one it's a after this jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished when he was on the cross by the way that the scripture might be fulfilled uh -huh. so what did he do said i thirst why is that now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there and they filled a sponge with sour wine put it on hyssop, uh, hyssop and put it to his mouth they also gave him gall for uh, so, uh, so, w w w so it says that the Lord was about like to give His last breath, and what happened? Ah, there is one prophecy not fulfilled yet. So he said, "I'm thirst." <laughs> so they give him what? Sour wine. Ah, was it a, a prophecy? Yes. What about in the Book of Psalms, eleven hundred years before Christ? What does it say? They also give me gold for my food and for my thirst they give me vinegar to drink see the lord just got even the cross last thing but say, oh, there is one prophecy must go i'm thirst so they give him this so every scripture must be fulfilled like heaven and the earth might like go but even a dot of the scriptures will never go here we go all right Number four, this is after Jesus luck was on the cross and it was a Sabbath that you have to bring them down. Therefore, because it was the preparation day that the bodies should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for this Sabbath was a higher day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified and his testimony is true and he knows that he is telling the truth so that you may believe for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled what the scripture says not one of his bones shall be broken this is john 19 so what about this one actually this is in the book of exodus chapter 12 we know you know as mentioned before all the feasts the seven feasts of the jews each feast 
like is representing an event of the life of Lord Jesus Christ. The Passover lamb itself was actually the typo of Lord Jesus Christ, a symbol of Lord Jesus Christ. And when the Lord gave the Moses the instruction how to like, how to cook and eat and uh, the, uh, the the Passover lamb, he said, "Do not break his bones." So this is what happened with Jesus. He died, so no need to break his bones. And by the way, I knew from a friend of mine who is from uh, an ex-Muslim. He's uh, he's a great guy and even serving the Lord now. He told me actually, yes, uh, there is something in in Islam that yes, uh, the uh, the sacrifice of Eid al-Adha, you should not break the bones. But they say, like, separate. So they say, if there is bones, you have to separate it, but not to break it. And also, uh, by the way, if you are from Egypt, or maybe from all the other uh, Arab countries, even for that particular feast, Eid al-Adha, they take the blood of the lamb and they put it on the doors, by the way, exactly like what was happening with what? The true, uh, sorry, the Passover lamb, which was what? Uh, uh, like uh, 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 a type of... Uh, Lord Jesus Christ as our uh, Passover lamb, our the sacrifice of the Passover. Uh, so this is the fulfillment of this. Number five, uh, you remember on the day of uh, the resurrection, uh, Lord Jesus like appeared some people, but uh, some seen him, some not. However, there were two disciples from Emmaus, they actually lost the hope and they were going back home on Sunday itself. And the Lord met them. And anyway, to make the story short, then what the Lord said to them, then he said to them, O foolish ones, and the slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. The Lord Jesus Christ, his main focus, as an, and even this should be our like, own like, attitude. Only the scriptures, that is it, full stop. Don't tell me the Bible doesn't have everything. Who tells you that? Actually, this is the voice of Satan. This is the voice of Satan, not, not, not human. Uh, yes, Satan using a human as well. No one can say that at all, by the way. Anyway, have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses. So what's happening now? Jesus doing what? Beginning at Moses and the, all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning him. So Jesus again began to bring, I, I show you that the Messiah must come, he must suffer, he must whatever, he must whatever. So he was testifying about himself from where? From the scriptures. No, he did not tell them, hey, listen, I show you that I'm Christ, I'm Christ. Okay, now get me some five loaves and two fish and five thousand people and fill it in. Oh, no, 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 no. Scriptures, not not miracles. The faith that is built on miracle, definitely you will lose it because of miracle as well. Your faith must be founded on what? The scriptures, the holy scriptures, the holy word of, of God. All right? So, dear brother and sister, focus only on the scriptures. Do your own best to read, to understand, reread again. Some di different like comment commentators, different translation. Like keep all that like until your last breath. This is the way it is. Okay. Now we come to the second main point, that Lord Jesus Himself, like He uh, prophesied about His own death, and even He He determined what time He will die, and for how long will he stay as dead and then he will rise. He determined this. Again, it's even the plan of the Jews as we'll see. I tell you, before I go to this point, there is a guy named uh, uh, Lee Strobel. Uh, there is some uh, testimony for him, by the way, called The Case for Christ. You can watch it or you can read it, it's up to you. But yes, you can watch it, especially if you take the uh, documentary one. Uh, he, he was an atheist, then he came to Christ, but he has to investigate everything. And he, he, he put the following uh, uh, proposition. He said, how if the Messiah was such a great, smart Jews, uh, Jewish guy, sorry, 
and he knew from the, the scriptures that the Messiah will perform some miracles here and there and 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 he was so smart like to do this like uh, uh, the Messiah will go uh, to Jerusalem riding on a donkey okay, riding the donkey and go then but he said but no one actually can prophesy about his birth uh, no one can prophesy uh, sorry uh, not uh, not to prophesy no one can no matter how smart you are you cannot manage <laughs> when and where to be and from where to be born <laughs> like if you can manage that like, to make some miracles because you are that smart but you cannot manage when and how and where to be born and also you cannot manage when how to die and when to to rise from the dead all right make sense so when the lord this the manage this this means what prophesied that he is god he is yahweh incarnate is Yahweh appearing in the flesh. So let's read now this together. Uh, now Jesus going up to Jerusalem took the twelve disciples aside on the road. This is not his first time to go to Jerusalem. All right. So, uh, but this one he knows exactly what's going to happen, and he took the disciples away, like the, from the other crowd, and said to them, "Behold." We are going up to Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah, we've done it before. No, what's the problem? <laughs> and the Son of Man will be betrayed to chief priests. Uh huh. So now this is what's going to happen this time. And the scribes, sorry, the pre uh, chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. And this is actually what happened in the first three religious, you can say, uh, 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 judgment or sentence. And they deliver him to the Gentiles, after that to the Romans, to mock and scourge and to crucify. And the third day he will rise again. Okay, so let's now, so this is what he told them before they entered Jerusalem. What happened actually on, on that occasion, we'll see now the plan of the high priests, but even Jesus fulfilled what he prophesied out himself, not according to their plan. So actually when he went there, of course, plenty of people around there, and Jesus was there, plenty of people actually supporting Jesus. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, that he said to the, his disciples, you know that after two days, ah, uh -huh, very close now, after two days is the Passover, a huge big feast, and the Son of Man, will be delivered to, to be crucified. Then the chief priests and scribes and the elder of the people assembled at the palace of the high priest, who was called uh, Caiaphas, and plotted to take Jesus by tricky and kill him. Okay? But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. So actually, to tell to kill him, that was it's um, like, that's fine. Now it's a matter of time. When, but he said, you know, Jerusalem is full of people coming because of Passover, and after that, the unleavened bread, and even some of them will stay until the Pentecost. So it's a huge, big, like uh, 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 festival time or time of festive. So it said, I would be uproar because many people still they like him, they love him, and they believe in him. So he said, no, make it after, not in the feast, like after we finish all these occasion. But Jesus said, he must die on the same day when they actually eat uh, or, uh, the, uh, the Passover. Because actually, Jesus is our Passover. So he actually, so they used to eat the Passover lamb. But now this is the true one. This is the real Passover. So, contrary to the plan of the elders or the leaders, he was crucified on the Passover feast. For indeed, here we go, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, For indeed Christ, our Passover, was crucified for us, I would say, was crucified on the Passover feast. So, telling them, this is like, this is, I would say, the shadow, and this is the true one. Alright? So, it must happen at the exact day all right here we go so now actually he determined he will be staying there for three days after that he will, die, will rise 
How can you articulate this? How can you manage this? You cannot. If you say, I'm smart, I go on a radio on a donkey, I'll do some miracles because I know the Messiah will do miracles and do stuff. You can manage this. Yes, you are very smart, you can do it. But you cannot manage this. After you die, how can you rise? Uh -huh. Unless you are really God. All right? On the next day, the after crucifixion, they followed the day which followed the day of preparation. The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how the deceiver said, After three days I will rise. Therefore commanded that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come to come by night and steal him away and say to the people, He has risen from the dead. So the last deception <laughs> would be worse than the first. They consider the, the resurrection a deception. My goodness. Oh my goodness. So, Lord just told them, I, this is what's going to happen, this is going to happen, and they will rise again. So, he cannot articulate his death and timing and how long to stay, like in the tomb, then to, to rise. Now, my last question, what do you think then, who is this man? Is he just, is he just a believer, or just a, a prophet, or just a messenger, or he is... Uh, uh, really, God or in, incarnate, like in in uh, 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 in flesh. If you'd like to know more, you, it's your responsibility to go dig and find out. And if someone tells you the Bible is corrupted, tell him, okay, can you show me the original? If they cannot come with a full original, then they lying to you. If you see, if you believe them, then you are sorry, you are blind. You go behind them. All right. There was a, a guy, by the way, told his follower, if you eat a certain type of food at a certain time of the day, that is from a certain, you get this food from a certain place, and if you eat it every day, all right, you will never ever be touched by a witchcraft or die because of poison. And this guy himself, the leader himself, who was touched by witchcraft. And actually, he died by poisoning. All right, so it's up to you now if you'd like to study who is really the true person that actually you can, can secure your salvation. If you know now, it is not a show of prophets, and every now and then God send one, and this one is b better than the other, all this stuff. No, it's absolutely not. Conclusion is one God, one book, talking about one person has two comings. First coming to, to the redeem, second coming to judge. All right. Uh, if you think it's a, uh, it's a good one, give it a like and share it on your social media. And unless the Lord comes, we meet again in another episode. May the Lord bless you.